Hi, I'm Alex Fornicelli. I'm an Iron Chef. I'm a chop judge. I am an accidental professional competition show cook who is going to show you right now how to make one of my favorite simple recipes, a spicy weeknight marinara sauce. The very first thing you want to do actually doesn't have to do with the tomato sauce. It has to do with the pasta that we're going to eat with it. Get a large pot of water and bring it to a boil. Step one. Then we get into the tomato sauce. Grab your cutting board, grab a chef's knife and a paring knife. That's pretty much all you'll need for this. And grab your excitement because this recipe is super easy and super fun. Now to get started, you're going to take a yellow onion, medium size, and we're just going to peel it. Big thing, peeling onions. Some people leave that root end on because they want the onion to stay whole. Me personally, that has dirt all around it. I don't want it in my, in my tomato sauce or in my dinner. So I'm going to start just by cutting that off. Now notice I'm not going to peel it all the way. And you can see that, right? Make your cut so it doesn't fully detach it, right? Almost like a little lid. And then use that to peel down. Do the same on the other side. Use that to peel down. You can see we've already got an entryway into our onion, right? Get a lot of questions about how do I not cry when peeling onions and slicing onions? Truth is, I think crying just a little bit for your dinner is not such a bad thing. What I sometimes do is I wear sunglasses. If I have to peel a lot of onions, that works. I only breathe through my mouth, that helps. And also using a sharp knife. If you can believe it, you may feel safer using a dull knife, like you're not gonna cut yourself, but a sharper knife makes cleaner cuts, so your onions won't make you tear up so much. Okay, so we have the onion. Now grab your garlic. This is a whole head. And just break it up a little bit. I try to push down a little bit on it just to break up the cloves, and you wanna do the same. For this recipe, we need one onion and five garlic cloves. Okay, it's not a date night recipe. This is like a third date when you're confident or when you're married, you can use five cloves of garlic, right? So five cloves and I pick them apart. And for this inner sort of group of smaller cloves that are hard to peel, I just pop those in foil with olive oil and roast them until they're tender in the oven. Just use those outer cloves. They're the easiest to use and they're all pretty uniform. This is what I would call a large clove of garlic. And again, the similar idea to the onion. We're just gonna take that outer skin off. I want you to start with fully peeled garlic and fully peeled onions. And there is something very zen about doing this, you know? It's a weeknight zen. Just when you get tired and hungry and you want dinner to be on the table, it is. Don't be afraid of the garlic, just peel away. You can also buy pre-peeled garlic at the supermarket in a bag that's, you know, sous vide in a pretty little packet. That's okay if you plan on using it all pretty soon. As for the chopped garlic in jars, I'm not a fan. I got to tell you, I think you're getting a product that is over-processed and you're paying a lot of money for it. There has to be that balance between convenience and ingredients that taste fresh and makes sense for you and your life. You can also make this sauce and let it sit in the fridge all week until there's a night when you're really tired and you need it. And that's what I love about it. It's definitely a weeknight sauce. So here are our five cloves of garlic. Here's your onion. Notice how I'm getting everything ready first. This is kind of my prep zone and this is the kind of finished zone. I have zones like your desk at work, right? You have your computer, you have your other stuff. It's in groups. Chefs are the same way. Carrot. Classic, regular old carrot. In this case, I do peel it. A lot of recipes, I like the skin on the carrot and I like the texture and the taste. But for this one, the carrot is really in there to add sweetness and round out that acidity from the tomatoes. Since we're using these whole peeled tomatoes, they can have a little bit of a tin can or a metallic taste. 
The carrot is the big neutralizer that goes in and says, hey, I'm really fresh and I'm not gonna let you be the boss of this sauce, okay? Slicing the onion, root side up, you're gonna take it. Notice how I'm holding it on either side so that it's not gonna roll or fall. And because I cut the tip off, it sits nice and flat. We like that. We don't want an onion rolling all around. That's how you really can cut yourself. So take your onion, and just slice it into two halves. And then, now this is what I always say about cutting an onion, right? I call it the claw. You wanna put that claw, turn your hand into a claw. We're just gonna slice into thin slices. You're gonna get about three quarters of the way through your onion and it's gonna start to feel like, hey, wait a minute, I can't, I can't hold on to this piece. Turn it on its side and do it again. Notice my fingers are curled underneath. My knife is only touching the middle part of my finger, right? Now, you have the blade side. You also have this edge, right, of the knife. When I'm done cutting, turn your knife and use that as your sweeper to always keep the space clear. Why not just drag the blade? Dragging your blade across your board dulls your knife. And we know you only wanna sharpen your knives when you absolutely have to. So slice and then sweep. Okay, cut the other half of your onion in the same exact way. Notice how my finger is moving along as I slice, right? Get about three quarters of the way through, turn it on its side. That way you don't have those awkward onion scraps because you get too afraid of the knife. I've got one onion here and look at how much that made. That's a lot of onion. So we're gonna start cooking that right away. Olive oil, extra virgin, about two tablespoons. Just get that nice and warm. This is a nice and easy dish. There's no hard searing or flambeing or sauteing. I'm just getting that onion down in the pan. So we're gonna start cooking this and we're just starting over medium heat. Not low and not excessively high. And you can see it's pretty mellow right now, but things will change in a minute. I use a wooden spoon here because a wooden spoon doesn't get super hot. I know you may have your classic metal spoon hanging around. How many times have I put that in the pan and then gone to grab it and burn myself? A wooden spoon, the best. All right, I've got that over medium heat. Immediately, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. Now the salt starts to bring the water out of the onions, which means we're cooking out all that water. The onions aren't browning too quickly and they're starting to cook nice and evenly. The other thing about salt is it tastes really good. And when you layer salt into your recipe, that's what's gonna make that really great dish. People are gonna say, hey, I thought you didn't know how to cook. Okay, the garlic. It takes a long time to mince a clove of garlic. It really does. And I want my garlic to really be integrated. So I'm just gonna use a classic microplane grater. It takes a long time to scrub garlic out of a cutting board. I always grate onto the plate. That way I can wash the plate and the board is none the wiser. Just gonna grate it, almost like liquefying it. You might have a little scrap of garlic, don't worry about that. You don't wanna grate your fingers, right? Okay, five cloves, grate away. And I love a microplane grater too because it can go right in the dishwasher. You're not gonna make more dishes for yourself, right? And you can see how that garlic is coming out, right? It's like ready to liquefy and melt all over the onions. Can you smell this dish already? You've got your onions cooking and you've got your garlic grating. I mean, this is an invitation to eat. They say that when you're selling your house, you should bake chocolate chip cookies just before people come to see the house. I think you should just start cooking garlic. People will say, what's for dinner? I wanna buy the house. Notice how this garlic is coming out. Nice and thin and even. You don't have to worry about the knife cuts because that can get really challenging to cut a lot of garlic super small. And it's time consuming. This is a weeknight dish and we want to eat. Okay. 
Tap the grater a few times just to get all that excess garlic out. This garlic, right in the pan with the onion. And spread it around, right? Spread the garlic. Are you hungry yet? To me, this dish just smells so good. And this is the longest part of the whole dish is just making sure that the foundation of your sauce really cooks evenly and beautifully. People always write me, Alex, I always burn my onions. They get too brown too quickly. You're the boss of your universe. Water, just add a splash. You can always give yourself a minute by adding a little bit of water. Also by doing that here, it spreads that garlic and integrates it all through the onions. So garlic and onions, pretty classic foundation. We have some salt. This is the spicy part, red pepper flakes. The classic pizzeria kind that you sprinkle on pizza. One teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Now, what if you don't like spicy, but you like the idea of weeknight marinara? Skip the red pepper flakes and you just have a classic marinara. What we don't use is pepper in this case. These red pepper flakes are really what sub in where you might've put classic cracked black pepper. Now the carrot itself, I'm gonna grate. This is a box grater, which has on the big hole side, as we say, and just grate it. I grate it because I want it to really melt in. Carrot rounds or slices just don't do the same thing. Can you see the effect we're getting? That's gonna melt in so much more easily than your normal slice. So now you're gonna put your carrots, this is one grated carrot, in with the onions and garlic. It's funny because can you smell that kind of, the garlic is a little bit bitter with the chili flakes, but then the sweetness of the onion and the sweetness of the carrot are kind of tempering that. So we're gonna get to the, one of the classic tomato sauce questions. To put sugar or not put sugar in your sauce, right? I had one grandmother who did and one grandmother who didn't. So I can't even defer to my grandma. People have threatened to divorce each other over this tomato sauce sugar question. I'm gonna add one teaspoon. Shh. Do it when nobody's looking. You don't wanna use sugar. You could use a little bit of honey in here too. I've done that, and it's nice because it's liquid. But in this case, I really like that classic sugar. All right, so now you've really built the foundation for your tomato sauce. All we really have left to do is add the tomatoes and cook it for a little while and watch as your sauce comes together. So we're ready to cook that pasta and get it going. I have the boiling water we began with, right? You have your boiling water that you began with. I'm gonna add a half a cup of salt to the boiling water. Okay, I'm gonna let that just boil and let the salt get integrated. And I'm gonna add the tomatoes to the base we built. Okay, now, these beautiful whole peeled tomatoes have arrived on the scene. And that liquid is really gonna feel welcome in your sauce, right? Because you've cooked all the water out of your onions and carrots and garlic and built that base. And now you just wanna let it stew. Break up your tomatoes just a little bit with the side of your spoon as you're going, right? Just give them a light crush. And they're not particularly firm. They're not gonna give you a hard time. And you'll see this is almost, it almost feels like a ready tomato sauce. And those tomatoes, they need to cook more. Add another pinch of salt. And I like to add a little bit of water maybe like half a cup at most, right? And just let this simmer on the stove. When you start making the sauce, you'll be alone in the kitchen. By the time you get to this step, your whole family will be perched on stools, breathing down your neck and waiting for this to be cooked. Now I get a lot of questions about cooking pasta. When to salt the water? Do you salt it and then bring it to a boil? 
or is it boiling and then you salt it? Here's my feeling. I don't want to take salt along for the ride of boiling water. I don't know how over salted the water is going to get if I put it in the beginning. Bring your water to a boil and then add your salt and then add your pasta. In this case, one pound of fusilli, the curly pasta. And I love these because these have all the little ridges that catch that sauce and really coat the, the pasta and pour it right in that boiling salted water. The other question I get all the time, should I add olive oil to my pasta water? If you cook a pound of pasta and lay it out on a tray to cool while you make a sauce, then I drop a little oil on it, toss it, just to keep them from sticking together. But why am I going to pour expensive olive oil into water and then pour that water down the drain? Not happening on my watch. Olive oil is too precious and expensive. Boil your pasta. Once it's been in the water one to two minutes, then I give it a little stir just to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom or sticking to itself. And now we got to let it cook. How long do you let pasta cook? You know, I usually find box instructions pretty accurate and time can vary depending on what kind of pasta you're cooking, right? Some thinner, smaller pastas, angel hair pasta, for example, only takes two, three minutes. A pasta like fusilli that's a little more chewy and toothy may take six or seven minutes. But here's the deal. If you undercook your pasta, you can always cook it a little bit more in the sauce on the stove. If you overcook it, it's a game over. So aim for a little bit on the undercooked side, a little more al dente, as they say, than you really normally like it. And that way we can drop it in here, toss it, cook it. Now at this point, you see the tomatoes starting to break up. Feel free to get in there with your spoon as it's cooking and simmering, right? Getting in there. At this point, when the tomatoes have cooked for a couple of minutes, and had an opportunity to meld together with the garlic, the onions, the carrots, those red pepper flakes, our secret pinch of sugar that we're not telling anybody about. This is when you want to really give it a taste. I find the acid from the tomato a little strong, and that can vary from can to can. So this is where you want to do those little personal adjustments. Just because a recipe told you to make something a certain way, taste it. Fix it and make it like you want it. I want a little more sugar here and I added it. All right, so you're stirring your pasta on the stove. You've got the timer set. You're following the instructions on the box, but you don't know what that pasta is doing in there, right? It's like a nightclub, a pot of pasta. You got to go inside to see what's going on. If your pot of uh, pasta is boiling over or getting temperamental, if you drop something cold and metal in there, It'll keep your pot from boiling over. You see that? Because it's just a temperature change. Cold spoon in there. You're a rock star. Grab a couple. Put them on your board. Grab one and do the classic taste to see where it's at. Hot. Mmm. Ooh, that's good. I think they're pretty ready. How do we know? For this dish, you want to take the pasta out a little al dente and a little early because we're going to toss it in the cheese and then toss it in the sauce. So it's going to keep cooking a little bit. You'll see it still holds its shape, not falling apart. Very carefully lift that pasta out of the water and drain it. Don't worry about whether there's a little bit of pasta water hanging around the ranch when you do it. That'll only thin out your sauce. If it's just a little bit, it's not a big deal. Shut off your sauce. When you see it getting really thick like this, right, and the tomatoes look really stewed, you can't even see that you use whole peeled tomatoes anymore because they've just broken apart in your sauce while it's cooked. Now, we're ready to plate. So clear off your counter and make space. I just like to sweep everything to the side. Make some space for yourself. Everything's off. 
The pasta water is off. This is draining. Your sauce is just kind of cooling on the stove. Get a nice serving dish, right? One that's kind of wide and big like this is nice. One that can definitely hold all the pasta, right? And start. You see you didn't use any olive oil in the water and it's not sticking and it's springy and beautiful. I use about one and a half to two cups of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese for this. If you don't want cheese in your dish, don't use it, skip it. Put a little cheese on the pasta first and just stir it and you'll see that the cheese is kind of melting into the crevices of the pasta, right? Salting it a little bit more. Now here's where you have a big decision to make. You have to look at the consistency of your sauce and decide. This to me, I left it like this on purpose so you could see. It's a touch thick. I want it just a little bit looser and you do too. So that's where you use the pasta water. Pasta water has those beautiful starches. That's sort of like a ready-made sauce enhancer for you. I'm just gonna put two tablespoons of pasta water in there and you see how your sauce is still thick and beautiful, but just a little bit looser? One more spoonful. And that's what that pasta water is for. So many recipes tell you, save the pasta water. And you're sort of saving this pot of hot water thinking, what am I going to need it for? It's to loosen your sauce. And you're just dropping the starch released from the pasta back into your dish. All right, drop all that sauce on top. Now in my house growing up, if you served the spaghetti like this, you might be kicked out of the family. You definitely want to toss your pasta and your sauce together to coat it. And here's the thing I've learned over the years. By doing this, you are letting a little bit of heat escape from the pasta and the sauce and the pasta have a chance to meld together before you eat it. Can you see that, how they're melding together? Tiny bit more pasta water, just to kind of loosen it a little bit. Little chefy trick that takes one minute. Here's the pasta. Just do what so many chefs do in restaurants and wipe the rim of your bowl. Because then you just look professionale. Some fresh basil. Such a classic basil with tomato sauce for a reason. It's sweet, it's floral. It's also very delicate. This is your sensitive friend that can't take much bad news. So you have to break things to them gently. That's basil. So we add it. At the very last minute, you want to take your basil, drop it in your ready-made pasta, put about half of the basil in, a few leaves. You want to just gently toss so that they're not all sitting on top. Some of them are kind of mixed into your pasta already. And then you want to put those other leaves on top. Don't cut basil. Don't chop it. You bruise it a lot with a knife and cutting it. You know how it gets all brown and discolored when you chop it, tear. You have a few big leaves, you wanna just tear them. And it saves you the trouble of washing your knife again. You see how fresh that looks? And then of course, if you wanna look, I mean, really like a maestro in your own kitchen, then get a block of parm and just grate some more on top and go all around. This is almost the fun part, just finishing it up. This is the kind of dish where as you're building it, you'll see that the smell is so good, it's gonna make you hungry. And also proud that you made dinner. Look at that. Now, a lot of pasta dishes say finish with a big, big sprinkle of olive oil all over it. Why? In this case, you've added a lot of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and to me, that's salty, and that acts almost like the olive oil to bring fat and richness to your dish. So skip that step. And there's your weeknight marinara.
again, wipe the edge of the bowl. It'll make you feel really like, you know, like you're on chopped. The proof is in the tasting, let's be honest. Very easy to serve a bowl of steaming pasta with this marinara on it, the basil. I think it kind of speaks for itself. If you're like me and you love a little bit of cheese on your pasta, feel free to serve your individual portions of pasta. See how the tomato is clinging and inside the ridges of this fusilli pasta? Feel free to grate a little more on the individual portions like you're in an Italian restaurant. All right, let's see if I'm an iron chef or if I'm fired. Mmm. Mmm. I think what you're gonna love about this is the heat from the red pepper flakes right up against that tangy tomato with the carrot and the fresh basil leaves and cheese. It's just a classic combo. You can't go wrong. All right, so there's our weeknight marinara that we made so easily together. Thanks for cooking along with me.